Welcome, everybody. I'm so excited that you're all here. Welcome to our Sunday Goal Achievement Mastery Mastermind meeting. Lots of M's in there. Uh, I'm Mike DeLuca. I'm your host. Very excited that you're here. Uh, very interested in tonight's topic. And uh, those of you who are uh, attending here on Meetup and on um, uh, let's see, we are on Facebook and we're on Zoom, all kinds of different places here. A number of people have told me they're uh, very interested in this discussion of the three Ps. And we're not talking about peas in the pod. Uh, we're talking about the three Ps that can, in fact, imprison us, right, uh, in a cycle of being sort of paralyzed with our problem, particular problem or challenge if we allow these three Ps to take control. So uh, as always, this uh, session is brought to you by my little company, Integrative Wellness and Development, LLC. Purpose of tonight, as it is always, is for education purposes only. I am not a therapist. I am not a psychiatrist. I am not a doctor. I am not a guru. I am simply someone who is facilitating discussion and bringing some personal development uh, tools and uh, information to you. And so that's what we're talking about tonight. And the three Ps are something that I think many of us can relate to and have had an experience with. So uh, let's go to the PowerPoint. I'm going to set that up and share the screen and press the little buttons, all the magic buttons that make things happen here and move this around and move that around and here we go so tonight's topic how to defeat the deadly three p's that keep you prisoner in hard times all right let's go to the first p but before i do that any guesses on what the three p's are we've talked about the three c's of crisis comeback right Concentration, creativity, collaboration, right? Those are ways to sort of uh, short circuit the three Ps. Uh, Marvin, what do you think? Uh, one of name one of the Ps. Name one of the procrastination. <laughs> procrastination. Well, I was going to talk about procrastination tonight, but I never got around to it. So we'll talk about that next week. All <laughs> right, but thank, but thank you for that. Uh, who else had their hand up? Jocelyn, did you have your hand up? I had the same mad procrastination. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to go into the first. Wait, wait a minute, Robin. Does Robin have a guess of one of the three Ps? I think I am a master in perfection. Ooh, that's another good one. That's another good one. Well, um, my, my presentation wasn't quite good enough to talk about perfection. So we'll talk about that in a future uh, program as well. So. I am going to jump into the first of the deadly three piece, and that is drum roll, please. Permanent. Ooh. Okay. Uh, how many people voted for permanent? The judges say no one. Okay. Well, permanent is one of the first deadly piece. And if you think about it for a moment, when we are in a problem situation, or we've been through a crisis situation, or we're in a crisis situation, one of the first deadly Ps is to think about or focus on the illusion that this situation is going to be permanent, right? Everything's going to be closed forever. There's, I'm going to have COVID forever right? There's going to be a recession or a depression forever, right? That is a major fear component that gets us in a downward spiral if we fall victim to that assumption that, oh my gosh, the sky is falling and the sun will never shine again. This is going to be permanent, okay? So the way we counteract that is to understand if we look to nature, nothing is permanent in nature, right? 
Spring and summer, they're wonderful. They're followed by fall. And winter comes and everyone says, oh, this winter is so long. I wonder if spring is ever going to come. And guess what? It does. Spring will always come one way or another. So to, to work with um, kind of diffusing this fear of this being permanent, we need to always be looking for the opportunities to rise above it, create change in ourself. <clears throat> and when we change ourselves, we'll create a change in the situation. We might not be able to change the situation for a larger population of people or the whole world, but we can make a change inside of ourselves. So when we are in a situation that there is a problem, by embracing the idea that this is temporary and I'm going to create a plan and I'm going to work the plan and I'm going to do what I need to do to keep taking little tiny steps forward of progress. And before you know it, the situation changes. It resolves, it improves, or you change and your ability to deal with it is strengthened a hundredfold. Does that make sense? Can you all think of a situation where you see, uh, you know, friends, family in the news, the, you know, somewhere where the first reaction of panic is, oh my gosh, this is going to be permanent. This is going to be forever. You ever seen that in your life, in your work, in the world? We all have. We all have. Can anyone give me a couple of examples? Anyone care to give an example? Marvin. Yeah, when I say, oh, you're always mad at me, or you're always, you're always like that. Like, that's, that's just a gross generalization, and it's never true. And sometimes it just seems like that. Yeah, and again, this is actually a natural tendency of the brain. It's a natural tendency of millions of years of conditioning and kind of the natural wiring of that prehistoric, you know, uh, you know, lizard brain of ours, that it is always looking for the worst case scenario. And it always is assuming that this is going to be forever, right? So I need to be afraid forever. I need to be on guard forever because there's always going to be a saber-toothed tiger outside the cave as far as it's concerned. And so every waking moment, you should be thinking about worrying about that saber-toothed tiger outside the cage. Well, now it's not saber-toothed tigers, but we have all kinds of other stuff to worry about. We have COVID and we have recession and we have supply chain issues and we have all kinds of other diseases and we have job losses and we have the economy crashing and we have the stock market going up and down and all kinds of stuff, right? But none of that is permanent. So again, we need to change from being reactive to being conscious in our choices of our state of consciousness, right? And our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual actions that we take to where we start to take control again of ourselves. And when we take more control of ourselves, we then begin to take more control of our personal universe. And for many of us, we've learned to do that in harmony with allowing that higher force of life to guide us to its will to its realm where it has a different idea about what is permanent. Because there's only the only one thing that we have that's permanent is our existence as immortal beings. That's the only part that's permanent. Everything else, the body, the emotions, the mind, the house, the car, the bank account, all of that stuff is not permanent. It's temporary. But what's permanent is our inner nature. And so we want to rely on that inner nature 
right? We want to lean on that inner nature and its partnership with the divine to move out of that sense of, oh, this is always going to be permanent. It's not. Okay. Is that clear for the first of the deadly three Ps, permanent? Can you all wrap your head and arms around that, understand it, and recognize it in yourself? I recognize it in myself, right? It's something I face every day. And some of the, the, you know, the things, the attachments that I have and the, the sort of um, panic programs that start spinning when certain things happen. But then I stop, I go within, and I begin to use the tools that we have to counteract that and understand nothing is permanent except our immortal existence as spiritual beings. Okay. All right, who can guess the second P? Maybe I'll try one. I would say powerless. Okay, powerless. Um, that's feeling like. You know, you can't do nothing about it. Yeah. Well, that's kind of related to the one we're going to talk about. So uh, I'll give you a half a point on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, it's, but it's it's not quite powerless. Um, it's not Popeye's chicken. Uh, it's not pizza. Uh, although for me, those can be very deadly peas. Uh, they're not what we're talking about today. The next P we're going to talk about today is pervasive. Okay, another reactive situation that we can fall into in a panic problem or crisis time is that there's something off here, there's something wrong here, there's something not working here in my life, and we suddenly make it so that everything in our life isn't working. So if we're having a relationship problem, suddenly everything in our life isn't working because the relationship isn't working. If we're having a financial problem, suddenly everything in our life isn't worth anything because we're broke right? Do, do you see where we can have a tendency to judge ourselves and the rest of our life when we run into a problem in one area of our life? Yes or yes? So this is important that we learn to uh, compartmentalize experiences and always be ready to counter a negative situation with recognition and gratitude for all the other parts of us that are working so if there's a if there's a, a rocky road in our relationship or the relationship fails or we lose a job That's a, that's a major loss, but it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of our life. It is one part of us, but we can look with gratitude on, oh, I have my health. When I wake up in the morning, I can breathe. I can stand up. I can walk. If you've lost your job, you have the talent, the experience, the confidence from all the things you've done in the past. And you've got the relationships you've made, the contacts, the networking. You can move on to another job or another way of, of generating income. All is not lost because that one situation was lost. And again, I'm a walking example of that. If I had allowed myself to generalize that the poverty, the joblessness, the homelessness that I had, 
and when you know there have been jobs that didn't work out along the way and there were jobs that were wildly successful but when a job didn't work out it wasn't the end of the world it was the end of that experience i focused on what did i learn and achieve here that was positive what contacts did i make what strengths did I develop? And I'm grateful for all of those other things so that I can isolate and insulate that one thing that did not work out the way I had planned. But you know, everything that didn't work out the way I planned wound up being the best thing that ever happened to me. Now, maybe that's just me. I don't think so. I think if we all look at situations that we really focused on and tr did our best and tried our hardest, and it didn't quite work out the way we planned, in four or five years, when you look back, it's like, now I understand. I understand that what seemed to be a failure, what seemed to be something that I, I didn't succeed in was actually life allowing me to take a step up. It was a step up instead of a setback. But it's important we don't allow the assumed negativity to spread like a cancer through the rest of us, through the rest of our lives, and, and cheapen or, or even discount all the wonderful, beautiful things. Right. Yes or yes? Any comments, examples, thoughts? Marvin. Sounds like a fail forward kind of conversation. Interesting you bring that up. To, Interesting to bring that up. To take the lessons learned rather than use it to, um, what's the word? Um, to shoot myself down or to yeah. negate the good stuff. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, coming from the world of aerospace, um, test pilots and the company I worked for had some of the best test pilots in the world. They were all top Navy aviators. Some of them were top guns. And um, one of the roles of a test pilot is to push the aircraft to the edge of its envelope and uh, at times cause it to fail because then the pilot, test pilot and the um, engineers would all understand that there is a limit here, a limitation that needs to be analyzed and addressed and then reworked to allow the aircraft to, in battle, to do what it needs to do to conquer the mission and save the pilot, right? So um, in cases where the aircraft during, you know, each, each test flight, the pilot went up, had he had a test card. And there were certain maneuvers that he or she had to do to push the envelope in a specific area. And um, so... If the aircraft failed the test, that wasn't a total failure. It was actually a positive thing because they learned more about the tolerances of the aircraft in that particular situation. And so I, you know, being a pilot and, and uh, understanding that there's all kinds of things that can go wrong you always have a checklist of things to do when things go wrong so that you understand that that one failure or that one problem or challenge, you isolate, you work, the, you deal with the problem, you isolate the problem, you work the problem, you solve the problem. 
but it doesn't mean you scrap the aircraft because it couldn't do that one particular part of the test, right? You don't say, well, the whole thing is a failure because it couldn't reach Mach 2 and it was supposed to reach Mach 2. Well, there's a reason then. We go back, you look at the design of the engine. We look at, you know, flight controls. We look at fuel. We look at, you know, we look at all kinds of things to determine why it's not reaching the goal that it was supposed to reach. So can you see how that applies, that, that you know, metaphor applies to our lives? That if we, if we take on the assumption that we are here and everything we do, we're here to do to learn, to grow, and to make a positive impact on ourselves and others, right? To receive love and share love, to receive wisdom and share wisdom, to receive freedom and liberation and share freedom and liberation, right? If we truly embrace that as the real reason we're here, we're not here to be perfect. We're not here for everything to go smoothly. We're not here to get everything we want when we want it. But what we are here for is to do our best try to be the best we can, us, we can be in that moment and learn from the things that work and develop gratitude and humility from those things and be generous in spirit and share what we've gained from those things. And then be gracious when things don't work out, be grateful for when things don't work out, and be focused on what can I learn and gain from this? And then how can I make life better for me and for others because of it? Then it's always a win. It's always a win. Okay, any comments, questions? Oh, there's an old saying, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Don't discount your entire being, right? Don't judge your entire self based on one small aspect. Because life doesn't do that. And that which we see as the thing that creates, sustains, and evolves all life does not see things that way either. It looks at everything as complete and everything as, as it should be and everything as it is in each moment. And we can learn from that perspective to have that for ourselves. We are the best we can be in this moment. Don't allow what is not working to poison and discount everything else that is. Okay, you can all see how getting caught up in pervasive can create challenges, right? So tonight we've looked at, let's look at the positive, right? And instead of allowing everything, we look at the gratitude of what Find those things that are working, right? Let's catch ourselves doing something right when something wrong is happening. Let's catch others doing something right when they may have not hit the mark on some other area, right? And let's be grateful. How's that sound? Okay. Guesses about the third P. Pineapple pizza. In baseball, there shouldn't be pineapple on pizza, is, is something somebody once said. 
Robin, were you going to say something? You're, you're, you're muted, so I couldn't hear you. No, I'm just say, saying you're you're stumping me pretty good tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, I can't picture where you're going next. All so, right. Yeah. So that, that's good. That's good. All right. The third P, and, and you know, there are a lot of other things. And you know, each each time we get together here, we talk about other things that are uh tools for us and also things that can be um sort of uh, anchors for us, pulling us down. And we want to be looking at all those things. And tonight, the third P is personal. Meaning taking everything personally, right? This thing didn't work out. Oh, it's because I'm not smart enough. I don't have enough education. I'm not handsome enough. I'm not wealthy enough. I don't have enough of the right friends. I'm not experienced enough. I'm not enough enough. You know, all the enough, enough, enoughs, right? Well, enough with the enough, enoughs. Okay. And when something happens, don't take it personal, right? Everything in the world is not your fault. And because something happens doesn't necessarily always mean there's something wrong with us or we did something wrong. Remember to look at the bigger picture that if there's something we can learn from something, there's a positive we can find in a negative situation, it's a plus, but the world is not conspiring against us all the time. Right. Even if you're a conspiracy theorist, right? Even if you are paranoid from time to time, the truth of it is, it's not all about you. Right. I know in Hollywood and reality shows and the celebrity world, there is a real challenge with forgetting that, hey, it's not all about you. The world doesn't revolve around you. And what you want and what you say and what you do is actually, and what you think is actually not that important to everyone else. And also, if you think that everybody is judging you because of something you did, if you actually use one of those polls that they seem to always use and you know, in politics, uh, if you were to take a poll and ask 100 people, do they really care about what you just did? I think probably 99.9% .9 of the people either didn't even know what you did or just don't care. So it's important to not take everything personally. And even if it is directed at you, we can look at what hand did I have in this? Or more importantly, what can I learn from it and how can I take it to a positive level? No matter what happens, how can I make something positive out of this? Anybody have an example of that? <laughs> I see smiles and nods. I've got a hundred of them. Robin. I, I'm, we've talked about this before, but this is the hardest lesson for me right now. Is it, you know, it does feel that, you know, creating the space for my, for my practice and then not being able to use it and have to shift someplace else. It, it does, uh, I have to work really hard to keep focus on what else is uh, being asked of me or where else am I being directed? Mm -hmm. So just one hit. And, hit. Yeah. But then also using your creative creativity to say, what options do I have? Right. 
what are all the options that I had that I could pick from, right? What would be cool? But, you know, what five different options would be really cool that I did never do, did before, right? Never explored and experienced before, right? Here's the opportunity to where we're free to exercise that creativity to say, this going the way it went is not a reflection on who I am, my capabilities, my professionalism, my talent, you know, my strength it has nothing to do with that, right? It's it's the way the situation, the years turn and the situation, all of the different players and all of the different balls in the air. There's so many moving parts to any one experience. And when they don't all line up, it's an opportunity to look at what else is possible because there's so much more that's possible. And one of those things might be even better, give you more freedom, right? Give you more opportunity and get you able to touch the people you never would touch before. And I'm always looking at that. And I've had all kinds of situations happen where I could no longer do what I love to do. I could no longer work in a certain capacity. And I didn't look at that situation and say, I'm a failure. Because what I, what, what I was doing that was working, I couldn't do anymore. No, it's like, okay, I'm if I'm the creator of my world and I'm following the guidance I'm receiving, then I know there's all kinds of possibilities. And I'm going to look to where else can I touch people? Where else can I serve people? Where else can I create value? And that's where we want to shift to instead of this didn't work out. It's my fault. I'm this, I'm that, I'm not this, I'm that. Look at, okay, this door is shut. What door can I open to create value? Maybe it's more value than I was creating before. Maybe I can reach more people in a different way. I know COVID sure did that to me. And the way I embraced Zoom and the way I embraced online coaching and all of the things I did over the last three years, I never would have thought of that before COVID. Marvin. It's really easy to say, don't take it personally. Um, I was um, I was watching this video, and um, person in the video said everything that you experience in your life reflects back to how you feel about yourself. How much self love you have for yourself all of that and um it's just something that i've thought about for the last three or four days a lot and it's easy to say don't take it personally yep how about if we clarified it and say, don't take it personally forever. Don't take it personally for a long time. You know, we're going to feel the sting. It's going to hurt. We want to look at it. We want to figure out, well, why is this hurting? Why am I reacting to it this way? What happened? We want to mourn the situation that's ended. And then we want to find out, well, how do I follow the next phase? How do I, you know, what opportunities are there? But then we make the choice to keep taking it personally. We make the choice to keep feeling unloved and unworthy, right? There comes a time, there comes a time when we look in the mirror, there comes a time when we must start the process of loving ourselves. Yeah. No one else is going to do it for us. Yeah. And it's as natural as you loving a dog or a cat 
you loving a husband or a wife, you know, you loving whatever it is that you love, we are all capable of loving. And there comes a time when we mm -hmm. need to look in the mirror and give that same acceptance, that same love, that same honoring to ourselves. And the three things we've talked about tonight, when we stop doing those things and do their opposites, it generates more self-love. Yep. Yes or yes? Yes, thank you. Yes. It's always our choice. And that's really important. It's our choice, what we allow ourselves to continue to accept, feel, and, and um, embrace as reality. And accept it that it's permanent. And accept it that it has, it's our entire being is this thing, right? Right? We have the power, we have the responsibility as well to stop embracing a state of consciousness, an attitude, or an opinion that is not only not serving us, but that is hurting us. Right? It's in our hands. Jocelyn. Yeah, well, that's exactly where I was heading. Um, it's um, learning to love yourself. Um, it's, it's, it's a profound lesson, especially I think in the world we're in, where we tend to uh, blame ourselves first before we love ourselves. And society is pretty much uh, going that direction. But what I'm saying here is it can be the lesson of a lifetime. I know for myself that a lot of the experiences I have where um, I was facing domination for different reasons, where I would give the power away for different reasons, were develop, helping me develop a lot of strength and recognizing who I was really, uh, what, was my, what were my values, to stand on, on my own two feet and to be able to realize and and respect the best of myself under any circumstances. And all of, all of the experiences I think I had were geared at that moment where eventually something inside say, I do recognize now why I'm here, what I represent, and, uh, and you respect all dimensions of yourself and you manifest it. And But it takes some time, a long time before you trust that all of this is in you, and it's time now to give yourself the love that you deserve. The love that you try to get from others or give to others is okay, but it, it, you have to get to the point where uh, do, you, do you trust, respect, and have the courage enough to stand into what you are and manifest it? Because even that is not easy, you know, it, and under all these circumstances, uh, as you do it, uh, you may get rejection, you may get criticized, you may get um, unloved, and uh, you expose yourself. So therefore, I think that uh, getting to the point of loving yourself uh, beyond any of these um, illusions uh, become crucial. And sometimes it takes almost a lifetime to learn that. Um, and it is a lifetime well spent attempting to learn these things and to claim our freedom and our happiness, right? But it takes responsibility, right? And these, but these are things that we can change, right? We can change the things, the way we think, the way we feel, and what we do that's in our hands. We have the power to change those things. We cannot change what everything else and everyone else is going to do. Those, those are the variables in life that we don't have much control over. What we can control is what's going on inside of us. Um, and that's, you know, that's why I built a lot of the tools that I built over the last few years to help people embrace 
their power to influence the way they think, the way they feel, the choices they make, and how they live their day, right? That's, um, that's why I created this program, right? I created this program so that people would have something each day to turn to, to create a foundation, right? Create a foundation to be able to wake up in the morning, be inspired, to wake up in the morning and set the tone, right? Set the tone to, to formulate and form what was going to make up the chemistry of the rest of their day, right? I gave them the ability by working with this journal to find something to be grateful for. to take control over the things to do, the goal they wanted to achieve that day, the things they were going to do and purposely look at things not to do, to notice, acknowledge and embrace the people, places, things and practices that support their goals and their success. And being mature enough to look at what are the people, places, things, and thought patterns that sabotage, right? To work consciously with their dreams, to be able to build that strength and that confidence and get that guidance to help learn that things are not permanent, to learn that troubles and problems are not all pervasive, and to learn that they have the opportunity to not take everything personal. Now, most of you here have taken this program and I, I, I think you'll agree that it really has helped us really see the opportunities for us to take control of the way we think, feel and act. And so that's why it's out there. GoalMasteryJournal.com is where people can find it. And um, what's really cool about it now is there is a video for each section of it. Great discussion, great instruction, step-by-step -step on how to use the program. For the price of a couple of dinners, it can change your life. Um, the other program, Your Nine Steps for Goal Achievement Mastery. Two video classes a month have been recorded going through each of these nine steps that if someone follows these steps, it is a treasure map. It is a roadmap to having success and being able to build that road to achieving your goals, setting the right goals for yourself, creating the right plans following the energetics, right, and principles that will help you attract opportunities and goals to you, and then learn to take what you've achieved and make it of service to the world. And that's at MikeDeLucaCoach.com. Those who want to take, take a deeper dive into your dreams, this is a great introductory program, RideMyDreams.com. Talk about the concepts of quantum dreaming, exploring the wisdom in your dreams, different kinds of dreams, and how to direct your dreams all in this program. So lots of cool stuff there. And the holidays are coming, so you might want to think about the gift of all of these programs and what they have to offer. And I'm really excited about this one. If you are in the healthcare field, uh, we are launching the Evolved Health Caring Thought Leader Program at evolvedhealthcaring.com. An incredible amount of benefits and content in this program. Private coaching twice a month, unlimited email and text correspondence. There'll be weekly meetings and then free access to all my other personal development programs. I'll also be designing a funnel for them 
designing a, a video for them to help them. I will help them launch a webinar. I'll help them watch a, launch a seminar, uh, set up a podcast, a YouTube channel. So much done for you. And that's why I only take eight students. Uh, I will be taking eight new students for the next six months uh, because of the amount of one-on-one -on -one and hands-on uh, work that I'll be doing with them. But um, for those of you who worked with me already, you know what this can do for someone who's looking to pivot. And right now in the field of healthcare, there is so much working against healthcare practitioners. The number of doctors and nurses and healthcare workers who are resigning and retiring because between government oversight, insurance company regulations, toxic patients, safety hazards, being overworked and underpaid, the stresses of the healthcare field are un, un, just awful. And members of certain members of the healthcare field have the highest degrees of uh, suicide right now of other any other professions. And the shortages are happening now because of this. So this program I've designed is for people who want to turn that around. Either they want to fall in love with healthcare again, they want to build strategies to make where they are better, or they want to choose to utilize the knowledge and the skills they have and create alternative means of impacting world health and being able to generate unlimited income. 24 hours a day. And it's not dependent on how many patients you see and how many procedures you do that the patient may need or not need. It's all about sharing your knowledge and wisdom, but doing it online. And I can help you do that. So evolvedhealthcaring.com is where people can go if they want to embrace this new opportunity to move from being a practitioner only to being a thought leader and impact people around the world. So now it's time to leave the screen share and let's go to questions, comments, thoughts, or what was the most important thing you received today? We'll entertain any of those things. Or if you're a Monty Python Holy Grail fan, what is your name? What is your quest? And what is your favorite color? And what is the average velocity of a sparrow? Robin. I think just continually hearing that it's a choice. Right, because it does, you know, you, it's very easy to settle into the emotion and um, and remember that it's, you know, or think that it's not, and that it's always a choice. And so it just benefits me to continually, you know, pick myself up and choose differently. Right, it's, two, it's choices in each moment, um, and because even that you can even do, oh, uh, you know, I didn't choose correctly, and then you can spin there, right? So um, realizing that it is an accumulation of small choices in each moment, and and just being continually reminded about that for each of the three categories. Thanks. Thank you. Jocelyn. Uh, one, one thing that I um, that caught my attention in what you said was look for opportunities and um, and even a change in yourself. 
And I think Marvin mentioned something about that we, uh, what we live is a reflection of what we are, what we think. Uh, but that thinking is quite often unconscious and is repeated and repeated and repeated. Now there are new tools and I perfected in those tools where you can revisit and go into the subconscious and see what else you can um, re-engineer, I can say, according to some beliefs of the past that are just uh, being re-manifested all the time. And you say, okay, I'm gonna do it this time, I'm gonna do it this time, but it never works. You try, you try, to try, it doesn't work because something at a subconscious level doesn't believe it. The belief is not there, but it can be done and it can be done fairly fast. So I think that uh, it's interesting to know that we can do changes in ourselves now with the, the new, uh, I'd say, approaches that are there and that we, instead of focusing on, I always say that, like, I don't want to go to Tokyo. I don't want to go to New York. Okay, so tell me where you want to go. And because quite often we put so much attention on where we don't want to go that, exactly. uh, uh, or what is not working, that all this energy is lost instead of saying, this is what I want to go. So when we, once we are very clear when we want to, go, want to go, we can make a statement of that and then work with the subconscious into bringing that statement in. And then that reality will start manifesting instead of the other one that was there forever. So uh, sometimes we need help. We need people who can accompany us into doing that work. But, uh, um, you know, I, I discovered some, some approaches lately that really help in that sense. And that made me believe that things are not permanent, um, really, even if they are in, in your subconscious and they've been repeating forever, that they are not permanent and that we can do something about it. I won't do publicity tonight about the technique, but I want to say it because these are new ways and and that bring a lot of hope into thinking, okay, I can work something with some conscious because, you know, um, the, the conscious part of the brain has only 40 bytes of information. The subconscious has 40,000. So quite often with our conscious, we try to do things, but we're constantly being sabotaged by something there. So with help, we can go and unlock this thing, put another belief that's going to bring us to where we want to go and not where what we try to avoid. Yeah. Real important things you said. Um, first off, we spend so much time thinking about what we don't want and not enough time focusing on what we do want. How do we get it? And what are we willing to do in order to get it? And then who will we become once we have it? All important things to be looking at. The other thing is, it's important to have mentors, coaches, colleagues, role models. It's important to associate ourselves with people who are achieving the things we want to achieve. And I'm always shocked when I find that people who are not achieving the things they want to achieve, not living the life that they want to live. And I look at who are the people that you are spending time with? Who are the, what are the conversations you're having? What are the practices you're doing? What are the habits? What's your routine? And they don't match the goal or desire that the person has. They continue to hang out with the same people who have the same problems, the same limitations, and the same, um, you know, attitudes and lack of resources and lack of vision, right? And they wonder, well, why am I not making headway here? Why am I not making progress? It's important to look at what are the changes you can make inside of you and what are the changes you can make around you in order to facilitate having your life change and having the things that you want to have happen, right? Instead of not having the things you don't want to have happen, right? And I, it's like, again, my dogs, right? If I say don't, if you're trying to train a dog and you say don't bark, <laughs> right? My wife laughs at me all the time because the, these dogs bark at me when I get up and I say, don't bark. And all the, all that the dog hears is bark. So it starts barking more, right? Don't bark. It barks more, right? I, I have to change and stop saying don't bark 
and I have to do the things that will make the dog more comfortable so it doesn't bark, right? Like, don't enter the room. <laughs> that solves everything. <laughs> or, or my wife explains to the dog, this is what I'm going to do. You're okay. You're safe. You don't need to get excited. And um, everything is okay. So something important there, right? It's not just about changing the way we think, feel, and act. It's also we must change our environment, the th right? Yeah. Not only yeah. the things we think and feel and do and say, but also we must change our environment to be surrounded by people who support the changes and the achievements we want to have or interact with people who are already successful in that area, that realm, who have the experience, have the success. And people are willing to help us if we ask, if we approach. We'll never get someplace new by doing the same old things the same old way. Marvin, you had your hand up. Did you want to say anything else before we uh, end tonight? Um, I've just been practicing something new this week that really worked. I was leading, <clears throat> I was leading this meeting, and I tried something new, and that was to really include everything everybody brought. Because I think that most of my life I've lived very contrary. Like my father's favorite expression was always, you gotta fight. You have to fight. He said that so often. Like, people don't have to say things that necessarily I agree with, but just including them creates relation, including what they say without judgment of it allows for relationship versus all these P's, which is just another like reaction. Yes. And and I'm very happy with the, the the results because my you know, relationships are becoming more intimate and a lot more fun and a lot more laughter. That's great. Yeah. Wonderful, Marvin, and thank you for the service you're providing by doing what you're doing. Yeah. It's another, yeah. it's, an, it's, it's just another side of acceptance yeah. or self-love to accept what, you know, and include what people say. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank, you're thank very you welcome. For tonight. Thank you for tonight. Very, very welcome. We wouldn't have tonight if you all didn't attend. And for those of you uh, joining us on Facebook, thank you for joining us on Facebook whether it is uh, right this moment or later on in the week. Um, thank you all for taking the time to listen and think and make choices about showing up tomorrow as the next better version of yourself in one or two small ways. If we can try things, do things, think about things uh, to make tomorrow just one step better for ourselves, it rubs off and makes things one step better for others and the world. That's how we impact the world, by impacting ourselves. If we want more love in the world, we need to love ourselves more, love each other more, and there will be more love in the world. If we want more freedom, we need to give ourselves that gift of freedom and give that gift of freedom to others 
and there will be more freedom in the world. Right? If we want to be wiser, we want to take the time to find that wisdom inside of us and that wisdom around us and that wisdom in those who have developed that wisdom greater than ours. Take that wisdom, implement it in our lives, and then share it with others. There will be more wisdom in the world. So thank you for your contributions to that. Uh, I love you all. I'm grateful for you all. Grateful for all that you do. Um, and grateful for how bright you shine. So um, thanks for being here. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great night and a great week. Thank you. Thank you.